So what should you expect when you're going into a capital raise? So over the last couple of months, I've been having many chats with different founders. And I think one of the most important things is if you're early to the capital raising process, and even if you've been through it a few times, sometimes you're really not sure what you should be expecting and what you shouldn't be expecting. And sometimes what happens is you think a lot of things that actually take place are unique and special to you. So this video is all about what the things that you should expect and what is normal for every founder when they're going through a capital raising process. Even the ones that you see as success stories in media about raising money, you know, I can guarantee that many of them have gone through the things that I am actually talking about. So the first one is emotions, right? So don't be afraid of emotions in the capital raising process. It is a thousand percent normal. Typically what's, what happens is, is us as founders, we're bullish about what we're doing. So we always start out overconfident. And then what happens is, is sometimes we get a few rejections back to back. And this could be over the space of two, three, six months. And it's a frustrating thing when you see lots of good things that you perceive happening in your business, but then you're, str you're, fr you're frustrated and struggling to make the right connection with investors or to get them across the line in, into your capital raise, or it's taking longer than what you expected. So frustration is a, is a very normal one, and often that can lead towards anger as well, right? Because we get this, because really as founders, we're passionate about what we're doing. You know, what we always think that we have got the best opportunity that, that investors have seen before us, right? And we're, we are the next big thing going forward. So we're passionate about what we do, we're emotional about what we do, but it's being realistic and understanding. Now, so important first step is that emotions part. Now, also what feeds into those emotions is it's a lonely road going through a capital raising process. And sometimes what we can have is we can experience doubt and we can also experience insignificance as well as part of it because there's lots of crazy things that happen in the rejection process or that happen in when investors are letting you know that they're not going to be investing into your business right because sometimes they may tell you about other companies that they're investing into other times they may compare you against their other investee companies other times they may be focusing on things which you don't believe are relevant for your business all this stuff is completely normal right so understand that emotions are part of the game right and there's literally and i said i do workshops i've done thousands i said i've done workshops to thousands of founders around the world Literally, I'm yet to find that one person that tells me that they love the capital raising process because they think it's so much fun, right? I have not found that person yet. If you are that person, feel free to, to add me on LinkedIn and send me a message about how much you enjoy capital raising and why. Um, the next one is that, so what happens when someone expresses interest is that you send out the follow-up email or you make a call and then all of a sudden there's no response, right? This is also normal right because sometimes said the person the people we are dealing with whether it be us right ourselves and also investors that are active in this space often are borderline adhd right so you've got to remember that we're always got lots of different things coming at us and there's many different reasons why they're not responding it could be they're focused on another transaction they've experienced a personal challenge of their own they could be on leave at that time right or there could just be other things happening that they've initially expressed interest and then now they're not. Maybe they've gone and done some online search and then they've now decided that they're not interested in your business. All these things happen without you knowing. So the challenge for most founders is as a personality, we like to be in control of the process. The reality is in, in capital raising, many people feel like they've lost control and they said that leads to the emotional component. Now, the next one is ghosting. So let's say you've meet, met with an investor and then you've had a really good conversation, maybe two, maybe three, and then all of a sudden, they stop responding. All of a sudden, they're not answering your phone calls, right? And you start to think, that what's going on? What happened, right? So ghosting is also very, very common, right? So understand that this happens to absolutely everyone in the process. Don't get offended by it, don't get upset by it, just add the, per it simply means that they're not interested, right? If you wanna break it down, if someone starts ghosting you, it just means that they're not interested at this stage or at this time. So my suggestion is don't get too emotional about it, don't get too upset, simply add that person to your uh, registration of interest list for your investors and keep them updated with what you're doing, right? Now the last one I think is probably the most important 
And it really is like what you should expecting to do, expect to learn from the entire process and also from rejections as well as people that go ahead. There's a lot to learn about what an investor sees and how they see interest in our business and in our business model and also the opportunity in our business, right, in the rejection process. I know for me, getting rejected has been some of the most valuable experiences that I have had when I'm going through a capital raise, right? So let's say a lot of the things that have happened to us over the last sort of 12 to 18 months has really been formed off the back of rejection and also investors coming in and me spending a lot of time with investors. Right, so that's from a strategic standpoint and a lot of the content I put out from a company standpoint is really around the experiences that I see and the frustrations, the ups and downs that our clients experience that I wanna help let them know that this stuff is completely normal when you're going through it. So, so to summarize, what to expect when you're going through a capital raise, what to understand what is normal and what is not normal. Firstly, the emotions part is massively normal. From the, the swaying of the overconfidence to the feeling like you're an absolute loser is completely normal, right? Just understand it's an emotional wave. Doesn't mean you are any of those. It's just an emotional wave that you go through. Um, the, when someone expresses interest and doesn't respond, that's also very normal. Ghosting is also normal in going through the capital raising process. And then the rejection component, learning from rejection should be a fundamental thing that we should all be focused on in going. Because said some of you are gonna go on to build incredible success stories with your business off the back of some of the lessons you learned from rejection. I hope that's helpful. I hope that provides some guidance as to what to expect when going through a capital raise. Look forward to providing more videos shortly.